Hi, this is Janine and today I'm going to do a short tutorial on how to use the Blue Letter Bible on the computer. So the website for the Blue Letter Bible is just blueletterbible.org O-R-G and then once you're in you can on the far right of my screen you can see that you can create a login and you can go to settings I'm really big on customizing things so <clears throat> you can under settings you can choose what do you want your default Bible to be because you can read from different translations but what's your go-to Bible translation so you can put that here See, they have quite a few. All right. And then they have these tabs that will come up, and it will ask you what do you want to be the, the first main tab. I like the interlinear at the top. So they have all these different options. <clears throat> I suggest playing with different ones, going back and forth, to see what you like. You can even change the color of the text here. And then you can have it go verse by verse or paragraph form. So for now, I'm going to leave it on paragraph form because it requires a little more explanation than the verse by verse. Now, if you go all the way to the bottom, you've got a few more options here. Not a big deal. And just go through stuff. And then make sure after you go through your, your options that you click at the bottom where it says Save Preferences. Okay? So I've already done mine, so I'm not going to worry about it. So now, um, I'm just looking at the options they have. Okay, so in this little window that's right here next to Blue Letter Bible, I, I'm going to type in, um, well, we'll put in Matthew 25. That's a really powerful passage. Now, <clears throat> here's where I want to show you just a couple things. Once you're in the book, if I say, um, so, okay, so I went to Matthew 25, and here's where you can see that I said, this is another place where you can select the version you want, okay? And then, here's the first verse. The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slept and slumbered. Okay, so see how all the verse numbers are like in a blue color? If you put your mouse over the number of the verse, options will show up. Interlinear, other Bibles, cross-references, commentaries, dictionaries, miscellaneous. So let's go to interlinear on verse, on verse 3. So it will only show you the interlinear verse by verse like one verse at a time, but it breaks it down by individual word. So in the center where it says G and a number, that's because it's the, the Greek. And if we were looking at a scripture in the Old Testament, it would say H and a number, meaning it was written in Hebrew. Okay, that's what that means. Now on the left, this is the Greek writing, okay, the Greek writing for the word. And this is what you call transliteration. It's, it's how you would say that Greek word if it was translated in, into in English. But it's not the actual English word. It's a pronunciation word is what it is. So, And then here's the English translation word. But English translations are sometimes don't show the whole picture. So if you highlight, put your mouse over anything that's blue, it'll, it'll create an underline and you can click on, turn red and you can click on it. So we're just picking this, I just selected this first word. And uh, this word in the Greek is hostess. 
Now, if you want to hear how it's pronounced, because some of the words are hard to pronounce, you're not sure, they have a little speaker. You can click on it, and it will pronounce this Greek word for you. Strong's G, 3748, hostis. 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 Okay. So, see, I was saying it wrong. Um, so, listening to the translation is really nice. Um, if you want to hear how is it really said. Okay, now it'll tell you what part of speech it is. It's a pronoun. And it'll also tell you what root word it's from. And see how you can click on those? As a matter of fact, if you just highlight it, it's giving you an instant summary of what those root words mean. Which, whom, that, who, what, whose. And then, so you don't even have to... You don't even have to click on it. You just highlight it and they pop up. It's so convenient. Okay, now um, this will tell you how many times that word is in the King, King James translation. So it's a hundred, used 154 times. Now here's the most important place we're going to go. Right here to outline a biblical usage. And this gives you the what that word means in more detail. So it means whoever, whatever, and who. Now, you know, I'm not saying that's an inclusive list, but it, it kind of cuts to the chase. There will be times when there's a word that whatever's here in the outline of biblical usage is just not enough information to get the answers you're looking for. And if that happens, sometimes it's helpful to, to look at these root words. And you get, okay, a lot more information. Now, okay, so we've looked up one word. Now to go back, you just use your browser's back arrow. So I'm going to click on the back arrow. And when it flashed, you were able to see what it looks like if I had selected verse layout rather than paragraph layout. Now, it, it, it backs up once so that we could look up this is a good one. Let's look up foolish. So let's go to 3474. And let's see how it's pronounced. Strong's G, 3474, moras. Moras. Okay, so that's moras. And let's go down to the outline of biblical usage. Foolish. Impious, godless. Okay, so let's look up. Now here's here's a um, here's a little more description below it under the Strong's definitions. So it says moros, probably from the base, and it gives you the number dull or stupid, as if shut up. Example, heedless. Morally a blockhead, apparently absurd, foolish. Okay, so basically the opposite of wise. They don't plan ahead. They're not um, sharp. They're dull. They're not thinking. Okay, so they're not thinking ahead and they're not being... Um, they're not being wise. Okay, so now we're going to hit the browser back arrow and we're going to hit it one more time so that you can see it brings you right back to your paragraph scriptures. Okay, now there's an option here if you wanted to copy some verses. Let's say you wanted to copy verses 2 through 4. You just highlight it. And then put your mouse over the highlight and right click and you can say copy. They have options up here, but it's easier to just do it that way with the mouse. And then you could paste it in your email if you're wanting to um, keep a record of certain scriptures for yourself to read. Like, oh, I want to make note of those scriptures. You know what else I use that for? Let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 91. So... Psalm 91 is a wonderful psalm about, it's a promise. Those who dwell in the secret place with the Most High, those that 
love the Lord and are close to Him. We have a lot of promises of protection and provision from the Lord. So this is the kind of psalm that you might want to block the whole thing. And so just scroll, you know, click and drag and let go, and then you can right click. You may want to save that in an email or your word processor and print it really big with some pretty colors and put it on your fridge. Look at it every day for a couple months and then put another scripture up. Okay, those are just fun things. Now, here's something else for those of us whose eyes aren't what they used to be. Right here, it gives you the option to change your font. So if you, when you see different little things, the best way to learn is click on them and experiment. What's that? What does that do? What does that do? They have an option to listen to the Bible being read. Now on the app, and I put this on the tutorial on your phone, you can have it read to you and scroll so you can read it and hear it at the same time if, if that's what you want to do. So um, I always check right here, this last item on the right says red letter. I always make sure that's checked because I want the words of Christ to really stand out. So even though the whole Bible is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit talking, when Jesus is very specifically speaking, which it's in the, in the New Testament, is where the red will show up. Even though there's times God is quoted, you know, God is speaking, like he said to the prophet, and it's in quotes, that's still God speaking in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, but but I still like it to show up in red when we get to the new. Now, um, so let's, again, so right here at the little top where it has the scripture and it tells you what version you're reading out of. Now, if you click this arrow, what did that just do? I don't even know what it did. I guess it widened the screen. Anyway, um, but see the letter? Let's go back to this. You click on it and you have all these font options. You have options for how do you want the font to look for the Hebrew, for the Greek, for your own reading. It defaults to Arial, but some people may want Georgia, which is, you know, a nice, a nice look here. Let's see what that looks like. There's Georgia. There's Times New Roman. See how it's not quite so bold? I think I like the Georgia one. But honestly, I'm more of a aerial when you're reading. I, I like it really bold. And then here you can choose colors. I don't think the colors would show up until I get out of there. And then you can increase the font more. Wow, I like it. Okay, I'll go back to that. And then just close it. So, don't you love it? You can customize all these things so that your Bible time is efficient, fun, and in depth. So that's all I'm going to cover for today. If you want to, oh, one more thing that I'm noticing. So let's say we're reading Psalm 91 and now we want to go to Psalm 92. How do we get there without typing it in? Right here on this toolbar on the left, you can go, and it, if you hold the mouse there for about two seconds, the instructions will pop up. If you hit the back arrow, you go backwards just by one chapter. If you hit this double back arrow, you go back to the previous book in the Bible. We don't want to go to Job and we don't want to go to Psalm 90, but I, and this is, let's see what that is. Huh. Oh, see what I mean by you click on things? Because I use the app on my phone more, so I'm exploring on the computer one too. So if you click on this down arrow, you can go, well, I want to jump to Romans right away. And I want to go to Romans 8. So now I did that really fast. I didn't have to type anything. That's actually very handy. Okay, this is a, oh, we got to do a teaching on this. This is one of the best books. I love it. Romans 8. Read it and prepare yourself for a study on it. Okay, so... Now, if we want to go to Romans 9, I just click this one to the right, and we go to Romans 9. If I want to go to the next book, we click it, and now we're in 1 Corinthians. See? 
Okay, so that's all we're going to do on the tutorial for using the Blue Letter Bible on the computer. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to write them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.